All right, a trip to the junk store. Um, I have good news about the junk store. Uh, they are not going out of business and they have found a new building. They will be relocating. And I've been told that uh, they will be opening up August 1st. That's the goal. Um, I drove past the new building. It looks very nice. It's not very far away from the uh, from the existing building. So it's just uh, about a mile more down the road, about three quarters of a mile down the road. Anyway, good news. Very, very good. And uh, I went there for a particular reason, but then I ran across these things and they had about a dozen of these. And these, uh, I'm going to use the word, these are ubiquitous. <laughs> these are everywhere. Um, and nobody wants them. They're super, super cheap. Um, in fact, I've never seen them so cheap. So they had them marked at $15. And uh, they had some real old school ones and they had pretty nice new ones. Uh, obviously, they're old because they have the HP logo. They don't say Agilent or Keysight. Um, so they are, they are a certain vintage. Um, so what are these things? Uh, well, they're switches to uh, control attenuators. Attenuators are like a binary code. And uh, if you have a, a digitally controlled one, you need to send it uh, some signals to operate the, the relays that are inside the, uh, the solenoids that are inside the, um, the attenuator. So this one uh, controls two different attenuators and it also has uh, two built-in switches. Um, so let's take a look at the back. So the way that you operate this, if you, if you want a attenuator, you can set the, you can set the binary code on the front. Uh, but generally the peop people who bought these things wanted them for the, uh, programmability. They are HPIB, GPIB, IEEE 488, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they're, they're GPIB controlled. And uh, one of your attenuators plugs into this HP specific connector and here another one plugs into here and you have to have special cables and everything. So your attenuators are controlled here. There's also two switches, which are just relays inside. There's one relay here and one relay here. So you could use these things as a HPIB controlled uh, relay. One relay, two relay, two relays, right? Um, so let's, I've already opened up the, opened up the case, my friend would be, my friend would be happy because he had, he uh, worked in the group that designed these uh, cases at, uh, at HP. Uh, they were, uh, oh, come on, let's open up this thing. They were uh, going from one model to another model. Oh man, oh, there we go, take the top off. Anyway, he, they came up with a system. There's uh, rails and uh, ways to mount things and uh, nice, Anyway, he, he worked on the group that, uh, that built these things. So what's inside, uh, what is inside one of these switches? Let's, uh, let's tilt it up. Um, so there's a power supply. It's not a very beefy one. It needs uh, plus five volts to run the logic and it needs 24 volts to run the LED. So that's what it is. It's a plus five supply and a plus 24 volt supply. So. I guess the plus five is somewhat useful, the plus 24, not a lot of people are using. Um, so uh, there's a, a TO3 can here, that's the plus five volt regulator. So that's like a, like a three amp, five volt regulator. And then on the side, uh, over here is another three volt regulator, uh, th three, I'm sorry, not three volt, three terminal regulator. Uh, this is a 7824, and this is basically a 7805. This is the fancy version. This is the uh, LM32, what are they? Uh, 323s, LM323s. They're either three amp or five amp, I don't remember, but they're a pretty healthy uh, five volt regulator. So probably if you need, need these two regulators, $15 is probably a good price just to get these two regulators. Um, so uh, there is no microprocessor in this thing. These are extremely low, uh, extremely old school HPIB. It's all TTL logic. And the, uh, the handshake and everything on the bus was all done in TTL logic. And programming, I, I've programmed these. Programming these things is pretty esoteric. You send it basically binary codes and it's, it's pretty esoteric. Um, so anyway. Um, so, so there's some cards. We can pull the cards out. Uh, this one has a little gal part. This might be a, uh, this might be a 22 V10 by the looks of it. Let me, I've showed those a lot on this channel. 
And this is a, yep, 22V10. So there's a 22V10 here that's doing something, and there's uh, something else going on over here. I'm not sure what that chip is. Or maybe that's just a sticker for the board. Uh, could be. So anyway, so a lot of logic being done here in the GAL. And uh, these need a clock, so there's some capacitors on here. It's probably one of these chips that generates the clock, and then this thing does other things. So anyway, um, so that's all there is on this board. <laughs> Let's take a look at the next board. Like I say, this is super old school. Yeah, see, not much logic on this board. This is, oh, this is a remote local logic, remote slash local logic. So there's a button on the front. You can either have it uh, programmable or you can put the push this button. It puts it into local mode and then the switches on the front panel are active. So this is the switch that goes between uh, HPIB or push buttons on the front panel. Does this one have a name on it? Uh, oh, this is Agilent. Oh my goodness, this board says Agilent. And the badge says HP. Wow! That's really unusual. Very, very unusual. So fairly, fairly modern board then if it's Agilent. It's got to be post 2000. Uh, where's my magnifying glass? <clears throat> Where did I put my... I had it just a second ago. Where's my magnifying glass? Uh, my cutters are on top of it. Okay. Let's take a look at the fake cuts on these things. Uh, zero, zero. Maybe the, oh, here, this is 1993, but I think that's just the version of when the software was written because the parts, wow. A gal part, can you imagine using a gal part in the year 2000? That's pretty crazy. Uh, this is the board that, that's the board that says Agilent. This board says, it says HP on it, but the date codes are, yeah, this is 1999 and this is 2000. So this is a pretty modern, it's a pretty modern unit. I've never seen an Agilent board and an HP. And why did they spin it? Why did they spin a new board? That's really, that's really weird. Anyway, what's this board do? This is the latch. This is a latch. <laughs> uh, LS 112s. It's a board with LS 112s on it. Just a bunch of latches. Uh, wow. Can you imagine spending the money just to do that one function? Uh, that's pretty nuts, okay? Anyway, um, this is all LS logic too. Can you still buy LS logic? Wow. <laughs> can you buy it? Can you buy LS logic brand new? I guess you can. Wow. Super, super old school. Okay. So that's these cards, and then really that this this handles the front panel and the uh, and the uh, HPIB, which must have been this board here. The HPIB must have been done by this board. Anyway, then here's the board that really does all the work. Uh, here we go. Um, can you zoom in on that? I can zoom in a little, a little further here. So this is just a bunch of transistors. Uh, one, two, three, four, yeah, 16 transistors. And it's probably just all PNP. It probably all just forces those 24 volts. And so that's all that is. It's just all on one heat sink. I guess that's a heat sink. No, that's just a piece of plastic. <laughs> Not much of a heat sink. It's just to hold them all there so they don't fall over. Uh, so yeah, they're all mounted on a piece of plastic. Very, very low currents. It's just switching 24 volts. So. Super, super old school. Lots of little protection diodes for the back EMF of the uh, of the solenoid. So, got a bunch of little diodes on there. And uh, then we got the two switch. The two. These are the two relays for the two switches on the back. Remember, I said there's two contacts there. So we have uh, two two relays made in Japan. Very nice, of course. Aromat. Yeah, very nice quality. Uh, what are the date codes on this one? Yep, zero, zero. Okay, this is a 2000 unit, so I guess that's fairly recent, right? 20 years ago. <laughs> um, 
So why did I buy this thing? Well, I bought it just for the box. I know people, a lot of people are going to scream, you can't do that. Don't rip apart stuff that works. It's $15. Get over it. It's 15 bucks. Nobody's going to use this thing. Nobody wants them anymore. Um, it is 21 years old. It's not an heirloom. It's not like something you're going to put on the shelf and say, oh, they only made six of these. They made these, like I said, these are ubiquitous. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to rip the guts out of this thing and I'm going to try to put two of these in there. Uh, so these are 24 volts, five amps. And I need plus or minus 24 volts. Um, I guess I already have 24 volts here. Hmm. But I probably, it's probably half an amp or something. It's probably not very good. Um, so I'm trying to think if I can put one here and one here. I think that's how I'm going to do it. One here, one here, and then I'll have down here. I'll put one here, one here. And then that'll leave me the top to put my circuitry in. I need circuitry. So the circuitry I'm putting in is my, uh, is my buffer. Uh, people don't remember my buffer. This is my buffer, my uh, OPA, what is it, 495? So I got I to gotta jam this up at the, not the motor, motor goes someplace else. I can take the motor off. All right, so this, 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 this thing here needs to, it's equivalent, needs to go, needs to go up here somewhere. So uh, maybe put a, a big heat sink along that, it's gonna get hot too, so put a big heat sink, either on the back or on the side, probably on the side. I'll, I'm gonna reuse the, uh, AC connection with uh, filtering and stuff. I'll reuse that. I'll reuse the, you reuse the switch on the front panel and stuff. Uh, and then I'll put one here and I'll put one here and that'll give me plus and minus 24 volts at five amps. And I'll need to design a little circuit board for the top. And then um, I might actually lay one out. I'm not sure. Depends on how exciting I'm going to get. Um, and then on the front, there'll be... Uh, uh, there'll be a BNC input, a BNC output, and then some switches, uh, variable gain. So the, the uh, amplifier will have like a gain of 1, 10, and 100 or something like that. Um, and what else? Maybe a meter? I don't know. Anyway, that's the, uh, that's the plan for this thing. Save the transformer for another project. Um, so a 7,200 microfarad capacitor at, at 15 volts. So how big do you think that is these days? <laughs> about, about that big? Uh, so yeah, probably don't need that anymore. Um, it's interesting that they kept, I mean, you know, don't fix it if it doesn't need fixing. Once once something's designed, it's very, very expensive to, to change it. So even in the year 2000, they said, hey, we've had this thing probably for a couple decades. This thing was probably dates back into the, maybe into the 60s, 70s at least. I'm sure these were around in, in, the, in the late 70s. Um, anyway, yeah, there you go. <clears throat> Part number HP 11713A, attenuator switch driver. I'll have to save the badge. All right, I started taking this thing apart and I, I had to continue on this video. Um, so I pulled out the transformer here and uh, winder number six. So thank you, number six. Um, so, you know, you think, you know, these would come from China or someplace like that. Um, I'm really shocked. Uh, here is the tag on the front, and it says it comes from Transformer Corporation West. And the thing that really strikes me funny is it's Willits, California. Now, if anybody has been to Willits, um, you know that that's like in the middle of nowhere in California. Um, there's a famous little train there called the Skunk Train. It's a little tourist trap. It's a little train that goes kind of between Willits and Fort Bragg. And, um, it's a cute little train, little steam engine train. Uh, Willits, California, but Willits is like, yeah, it's like very wildernessy. <laughs> it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, and uh, so my story though, I've got a story about Willits. Um, when I was in college, this must have been 1976, something like that. Um, 
my, who was it? Somebody, somebody's roommate. I think it was my girlfriend's roommate um, was Miss Willits. <laughs> I think she was like Miss Willits of 1975. Four, 1975 or something. Yeah, Miss Willits. Very pretty girl. <laughs> but yeah, I knew Miss Willits. Um, that is super cool. I, I had no idea that there was any technology there at all. Uh, these days, it's probably a bunch of pot farmers. But um, yeah, uh, that's pretty. That's pretty amazing. Anyway, it's all it's all on connectors too. I didn't have to desolder anything. It all uh, it all just came off on connectors. Oh, pretty cool. Oh well. Remembering Miss Willits. All right, I think uh, these will go in here just fine. And then on the back side, I've got lots of room here for a bottom board, right? I've got a good inch of, of area. Uh, so I can put in a big, a big board here with all my amplifier and stuff on it. And then the amplifier itself will probably sit on a heat sink out to the real world here. So yeah, I think that's gonna, uh, I think that's going to work out just fine.